Hi everyone, in this video we're going to show how System.js loads modules and how it determines what the module's exports are. We're going to do this by creating our own miniature version of System.js and comparing it to the real version of System.js. I hope you enjoy it. Let's jump into it. The goal of what we're doing here is to get this code to work. So we are calling system.import main.js and then we're just logging the module that it returns. But we don't have system.js. We're actually going to implement system.js on our own. This will be a very minimal implementation that is supposed to show exactly one concept, which is how does system.js determine what the module object is when you call system.import? OK, so that's our objective. Let's look at our fake system.js file. It is completely empty. Let's look at our main.js file. This is where it's calling system.register. I have a video about the system.register format. I would recommend that you go um, look at that one first, because if you don't understand that part, some of what I'm about to show might not make sense. But let's jump into it. When I switch over to this tab, we're watching the code run. And it says error system is not defined. So we are trying to call system.import and it's not working. And the reason why is because we don't even have system.js on the page and our fake system.js is not doing anything. We're going to start it off by creating a class called system.js. So this should change some things. Now we have the system global variable. So when we call system.import, the system will be there, but the import won't be. And so system.import is not a, not a function. It's now time to implement import. Our little fake version of system.js is not going to be very complicated. It's not going to be able to do import maps. It's not going to maintain a registry. It's not going to prevent duplicate network requests. Those are all things that system.js in reality does support, but not our version. Our version is going to be built here in just a couple minutes. And the main thing I want you to understand is that it returns a promise. And then in that promise, we create a script tag. We set the script tag source to be the URL. And then we add a couple event listeners. We add an error event listener. And so if the script fails to load, then um, we'll reject our import promise and say, sorry, it failed to load. If it succeeds in loading, then what we need to do is somehow return a module object. So let's think about this a little bit more. Um, so here inside of our main.js, in fact, let's see if I can get it. I want it to be side by side. Here we go. So this main.js module, it's trying to export hello world. So really, our object should be hello world. That's what we need to return somehow. And um, really, it's not always going to be this hello world. It just depends on whatever they do inside of the main.js file. So we're creating a script tag, and then we're waiting for it to load, and then we need to somehow figure out what it exported. Um, there's one other thing I did forget to add here, which is that we need to add it to the um, document. OK, so if you, are, if you haven't used script tags very much before, this is creating the script tag and appending it to the head, which will cause the browser to make a network request to go download the main.js. Um, however, um, and then it will go download it and it will execute it. 
However, we still don't have the hello world or anything coming through. It will just execute this code. So let's try this. Uh, we're going to run it in the browser. I'll add one last thing here to make it a little bit better. OK, so here it's saying undefined is not a promise. Um, oh, return new promise. OK. Not saying system.register is not a function, but what this means, it's actually a lot of progress here. What this means is that now we are downloading the main.js file. Previously, we were not. So we've got our system.import actually downloading that file and trying to execute it. And just when it tries to execute it, it's saying like, well, you've got a system variable, but it doesn't have a register function on it. And so we need to add a register function. So the register is going to give us a couple items. This is related to the system.js format from the previous video. But um, we need to store this, the things that were registered. And so we're going to do that with the last register variable. Okay. And so whenever, whenever system.register is called, we will store that as the last register. Okay. And then um, the next thing that we need to do is make sure that when the load event occurs, that we get the last register and then somehow get the uh, module object out of it. This is one of the key things to take away from this video is that this load event is guaranteed to fire the moment after main.js finishes its initial execution. So the browser downloads the code, executes the code, and immediately fires the load event. There are no ticks of the event loop in between. There are no micro ticks of the event loop in between. It will synchronously fire as soon as, um, as, soon as this ends. And the reason why that's important is that there might, we might call system.import a ton of times, let's say five times. And those five um, imports are going to all create script tags, and we're going to be waiting for all of them to load. But we only have one last register variable. And so there are five imports, but only one last register variable. The way that you solve that is you um, you have to get the last register variable at the moment that it just called system.register. Right after it calls system.register, we immediately look at that last register. Um, and so that's a way of making it concurrent safe. So here I'm going to just add in console.log last register and we'll just see what it is. So here last register is an array and it is, this is the empty array that is inside of, oops, it's the empty array that's this one, this empty array. And then the export function here, or the function with export as an argument, that's this one right here. And so we've captured that in the last register variable and we have it. What we need to do is it's called instantiating the register or um, executing it. There's a link phase, there's an instantiate phase, and that's all part of the system.js format. And what we're going to do here is execute it. So we will get the dependencies, which is an empty array, and then we will get the um, link function from our last register. So this is destructuring the two arguments. This is the first argument. This is the second argument. Similarly, dependencies is the first and link function is the second. Now we're going to call the link function, but we need to call it with an export function. So we need to create that export function. Here's where we're going to create our module object and we're going to create our export function. So later on, this module object is what we're going to resolve it with. It's an empty object right now, but our hope is to add hello world to it as this code gets executed. The export function is going to take in a key and a value, and we're just going to set 
we're just going to set the um, the value onto the module object with the proper key. So the hello is the key, and then the world is the value. Okay. So now that we have an export function, it's time to call the link function. And the link function will be called with export. You'll notice that it returns this object right here. And this object right here has an execute function um, inside of the system.js code. This is often called declare. Um, and so we now have our declare object. And then now we need to do declare.execute. And that's just calling this function to make it execute. Executing that will have the console log and it will also call export, which is our export function, which will set the property on the module object. And then at the very end, we are able to actually return the module object or resolve our promise with the module object saying that module object is the module object for our um, system.import. Um, so this is actually it. I think that this will work. Let's do a little bit of debugging to see if it does. If it does work, what we'll expect to see is a hello world object being printed um, right when we say um, main module. So here we go, main module. It should say main module and then an object with hello world. That's what we're hoping for. Let's see if I missed anything. Nope, here it is. Okay. So this worked, and this really is how System.js does um, operate. It does create a script tag. It does add error and load event, um, event listeners to that script tag. And then it does call your register function, the link function with an export function. It creates a module object, and then it sets values on the module object. This is very much how System.js works. The, um, there are a couple differences, of course. System.js is a bit more sophisticated. If you call system.import the same over and over again with the same URL, it should not be recreating the script tag every time, for example. Um, but this is how it works. And again, the most important thing that I'm wanting to teach in this video is about this load event. So this is concurrent safe. You could call system.import a thousand times all at once, and you would always get the correct module object for each individual one of those thousand imports because we're guaranteed to have the load event fire at the very moment when our module finishes executing. So in main.js here, right after line six, at this moment, when the code is done for main.js, we finished line six, we're on line seven, it's empty, there's nothing more in the file. At that very moment, before any set timeouts, before any ticks or micro ticks of the event loop, the script load event fires, and we're able to see, okay, did someone just call system.register? Yes, they did. And let's go do our thing to figure out what the exports are. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe if you like this content. I do create these videos every once in a while. Your subscriptions help motivate me to do it a little bit more. Thanks.